button. Be conscious of the button, of the big button. Okay. Yep. Big button. Hello, What's up? I don't think I can physically reach it. Con today. Um, looks like all the mic and everything's working good. Um, so today we're going to be watching the producing live VR theater panel, um, and that's going to get started in just a minute. And once people get in here and get going, we will get started. Through the streamer cam. <laughs> Hello, it, it stream actually, cam. It can't see you right now because it's facing the wrong way. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He he was just practicing. Oh, he's, he's rehearsing. Yes, yes. Well, and you all know I do have leg spikes, so if I if I just cut off in the middle of a sentence, you can either follow along with it and and, and follow up with it if I'm making sense, or otherwise um go. Right. <laughs> Hello, Hi, welcome. Hello, welcome. Oh, you got in. Welcome. I cheated my way in. Oh, okay. Uh, you know. Hey, uh, same as me. Same as me. <laughs> How's everybody doing? I think they you might know us. I'm yes. Trumpus. This is the mayor. This is the mayor of Puddles. Ah, oh, there you guys are. I figured you might be around yeah. here, though. Oh, oh shit. Just Hang a on. sec. I need to give him the ability to, yeah, yeah. talk. The voice off. That's why. Yes. You Use have the, the ability. Hello. Figured you guys might be around here. Do you? I still can't hear you. Oh, oh. no, it didn't uh, work. Oh, fuck. One sec. One sec. Yeah. The event is starting uh, now. Would you like to join? Just ignore that. I mean, just hit dismiss. <laughs> okay. All right. I can, hear, I can hear you now. Hey, cool. All right. Great. Hello. Figured you well, guys welcome. might be around here. How's it going? Yes. yes I bumped into, uh, yeah. I think, most of you. All of you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or maybe not well, Ryan. Join us. I think everybody else I, um, I bumped into around the desert I'm at some point. Gamma, I'm do you have this event the, in your watch? Yeah. Oh, okay. Then yes. Uh, I did. I had to. Oh, sorry. Yeah, your name is uh, up against the white background of the slide, the... so I couldn't okay. make oh. out who's who. Oh, yeah. It... People aren't coming in here. Can you go to the event, party up with them, and I'll invite you back here. Thanks for having fun. It oh, should I just be it. It live. There's the event. Yeah. There Tell me they ended up in a different instance. That's really what I want to hear. Yeah. That's. Yeah, oh, great. Yeah, let, me, okay. let me go check, this, though. Yeah, go this bug has everybody you can, and then bring them back here. I'll send you okay. an invite. All right. Oh, it says room full. What? Okay, okay. I'm going to force myself in there. Yeah, Party force up. yourself in. Sorry. <laughs> Gamma's going to fetch everybody here. They're not here for some reason. Okay. Okay. We redid that event system a couple months back, and, and it clearly it still needs some touch-up work. Uh, quite as much as we um. have this weekend. Well, yeah. So, you know, hey, uh, live testing ground. So uh, we're doing it's it live. It's always a learning process. Very understandable. We, we've had a lot of issues like that as well. Sometimes, you know, there you're about to start okay. a show and, oh, I didn't publish the thing correctly and uh, we're not going to have shows tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and for us, it's photon yeah, matchmaking, which okay. some of you guys know the struggles of yeah, anyway. So. Yeah, instancing and all that. I've had to grab all the stuff I need here. Uh, hit paste, set, and okay. See there you we soon. Go. Okay. All right. Gamma's gonna go fetch everybody. Cool. I'm gonna fetch all 170 people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the the room limit is a firm 40, correct? Yeah. It that's a pretty hard limit for us. Otherwise, everything just lags out. So. Um, yeah. That's <laughs> and even when it's less than 40. Yeah, yeah. Depends on what device you're on. I feel ya. Okay. Uh, yeah, that, that was my worry when I saw how many RSVPs there were, that we would have, you know, 200 people in standing space and just be like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Packed on the balcony. Okay. Uh, do you want your speaking role on still? You'll just push the talk during the event, or? Yeah, I can do that, sure. Okay. What's up the PTC? I'm going to do that as well. Down. All right. Boy, that fire's a crackling, Brian. Yeah, I, I could remove it uh, if you don't like the sound. I don't know. I think oh, it's kind of pleasant. oh, no. I, I want to cook s'mores. That's what I want to do. <laughs> 
adds a certain amount of ambiance and doesn't isn't quite as loud as the crowd sounds. <laughs> yes. Ah, uh, yes. Of the people in that other instance, I see some familiar names. Oh, uh, I was going to mention, you can, you can change your display name if you want to your actual name. It's in the settings, and you go to oh. the, the gear icon in the top right-hand corner, and then it's under... Uh, it's not there, actually. It's, it's not there. In, it's if you hit your profile um, button in the top left of the main menu. Ah, here comes everybody. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, it's, it's in the could l get... upper, upper left-hand corner. Uh, yeah, everyone I could get. The... So. All right. Well, um. Sorry. Where, where's where's that at? Which Emma, menu? if you want to just in, invite in, people in, on your recent list in, in that are menu, still there. Top left-hand yeah. corner. That's that's what we can do. And the orange button. Okay. Yeah. That's German. There's right. the orange button, and then you'll see that the second the second field. Uh, there's the one. The top is your actual oh. login. And the second one is your. Display. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. There it is. Welcome everybody. We're gonna get started here in just Hello, a minute. Hi. Love to hi see there. all these faces. So glad that you could all join us. Oh lordy, that's too too much. No, I didn't I it was too much. Yeah, we got some water over there on the right. There's a couple chairs on either side as well. Don't, don't miss those. Um, yes, if you need refreshments, there are uh, bottles of water in the back. They do refresh, so you can all enjoy them. <laughs> There's not a scarcity Repeat of water. if necessary. There you go. Good. I'm glad everyone's getting refreshed and hydrated. Time to do it. Oh, <laughs> hey, hi there, paper duck. <laughs> Go easy, you're driving yeah. <laughs> later. <laughs> good to see you, and Ash, it's good to see you. <laughs> I, what, what is that you're sending us? Are they? Is it the? the is it the? What is that? We we haven't even said anything yet, and they're already throwing things at us. Oh, no. no, it's a is gift. A picture? It's pictures. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. It's Polaroid. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, two bottles of water at once. Uh, I see going on out there. That that's fun. I like how it looks like popcorn yeah. coming out. Do you out. think this is uh, all the people that can fit in here? Or... Looks like there's not many more people spawning. Okay, everyone, yeah, let's go like... ahead and start, because why not, right? Seems like a good time to start. If you wanted to have a seat, you're more than welcome to. And if you want to just drink water, that's fine. I will go ahead and talk a lot. I'm the moderator. Um, my name is Deirdre. Like you can read my name, Deirdre. Nice to meet you. Um, and you sound I'm a bit like you're, uh, you're coming through a, your, your sound's a little off. Do you change up in your sound settings? I sound it, a little off. You might off. be a bit muted, dear Dra. Oh dear. Hmm. Well, I can certainly talk louder. That's, that's something that's easy for me to do. Um, but yeah, oh, there's an oh, audio oh, settings. Let me just uh, switch my audio settings to microphone. Uh, uh, voice pitch. Voices you can hear. I have it on. Look, the audience says it sounds fine. No, they can hear. I, I guess it's just me. All right. I think you can the hear? Can hear. All right. Well, I will also talk very loud because this is something I can do. So, hello. Have you ever wondered about the power of VR to create live theatrical performances? VR is a perfect environment for creating immersive theater, and it can also be used for 
will be used for a more traditional Presidium Theater, of course, one where uh, a potentially global audience can attend, where performers aren't limited to geographical locations, and in the current environment of the world, it can be done safely. That's right. We are VR Theater Creators. We just recently closed our production of Para for the Halloween season. Para was a 20-minute live VR theatrical production hosted in VR chat. We are currently working on our holiday show, Krampus Knock, which will be hosted in VR chat and will open on December 19th. Tickets are currently available at Ticket Leap. We're even offering a little discount for all of you rec room uh, attendees here for this uh, production. So. Welcome. We are going to be discussing both acting and producing in VR and how that can be done on social platforms like Rec Room or others. Okay? Hello. My name is Deirdre Lyons. I will be moderating. I will do my introduction first and then I will introduce the other panelists here. I, uh, I've been working in immersive theater in Los Angeles for for whew, a super long time. And then I started doing VR. I first did two VR films. And then I moved on to joining the ensemble cast of The Under Presents, a time and mind-bending immersive theater experience in VR that won Best VR Experience of the Year at the VR Awards, as well as a Shakespearean production from the same studio, Tender Claws, called The Under Presents Tempest, a live part scripted, part improvised, immersive experience that audience attended from home using a virtual reality headset. Winner of the best narrative experience at the Rain Dance Film Festival. I was also a principal in Finding Pandora X by Double Eye Studios. Winner of best immersive experience in the Venice VR Expanded, the official virtual reality competition section of the 77th, 77th Venice International Film Festival. And I am currently co co-producing and directing uh, and acting in para and immersive horror experience. Uh, sorry, that was what we did. Uh, and then and I will help be helping with our next production, Krampus Nun. Yay! Okay. So over at the far end is Stephen Butchko. Would you please go ahead and wave? Stephen Butchko grew up in the Northwest and developed a love for performing when he was 11 years old. He received his bachelor's degree in theater at Western Washington University and moved to Seattle after graduating where he worked in and around theater until moving to Los Angeles with his new girlfriend, Deirdre Lyons, that's me. Uh, together, through the years, they performed on theater stages and film sets and learned the nuts and bolts of producing in both mediums. In December of 2019, he, the two of them, us, we both auditioned for Tender Claws of the Tempest, but unfortunately, a competing job kept Steve from performing in virtual reality until the recent pandemic changed everything. Sadly, opportunities for performing in real life have been cut short, but Steve ha is happy to be now producing and performing again with his wife, that's me, Deirdre Lyons, within this exciting and challenging new world of VR. Hello, hello, hello. And then next to him is Brian Tull, who is the creator, the mastermind of both Para and Krampus Knot. Producer, director, world binning, and this year playing Krampus himself, Brian is film and theater critic at horrorbuzz.com, specializing in immersive theater and VR. He also helps organize the yearly short film festival Horror Buzz that has been running at the Midsummer Scream Horror Convention in Long Beach since 2017. He's also a longtime VR enthusiast who's been dreaming and tinkering in VR since the days of the early Oculus development kits. What? I know. And then over here, we've got Brayden Roy. He is the writer and producer of Paris and Krampus Knock, majored in film production with minors in computer science and fine art at Minnesota State University, University Moorhead, while his day job is system and network administration along with web development and graphic design. He has a background in illustration, marketing, music production, game design, and development. Let's let's all raise our hands for all of these crazy cats here, huh? Yes. I know. Absolutely. Oh, and before we <laughs> move yeah. on, we should have a shout out to Mama Monkey, your community manager, who is assisting us with the screen share here and has been very, very helpful in setting up this uh, this panel. Thank so you, Mama Monkey. Mama Monkey in the back and over there in the, on the balcony. Woo-woo! All right, so shall we get down to it? Let's let's start with just some 
short questions about what inspired you to get into VR in the first place and which came first for each of you, performing or producing in VR or viewing a performance in VR. Let me start with you, Brayden. Um, I suppose my interest in VR kind of predates it being mainstream in, in so much that it is now. Um, there was always, it was always the next big thing. When a, a console would come out going way back, it was always, well, what comes next? Well, it's got to be VR, right? Like, that's what all these TV shows and movies and books, it always allude to that. But from there, it kind of just snowballed. I, I saw Oculus Rift go up up on Kickstarter, back that, followed that, just kind of rode the wave since then. And in terms of what my first experience with live VR experiences go, um, my first real go was The Under Presents, where I mm. was a participant in the audience as a player, which then kind of snowballed from there. <laughs> nice. Brian? Uh, well... I, my first uh, introduction to theater came through Haunted Houses. I've been a fan of Haunted Houses for forever. Then I started writing for Horror Buzz, and I eventually got some invites to go and cover certain immersive theater productions. If anyone doesn't know what that is, immersive theater productions are essentially theatrical productions without a proscenium, without a stage. You're brought up on the, the stage with all the, the actors, and you sort of mingle amongst them, and you're able to interact with them. Uh, so I got the, got the bug for that, got to see a lot of wonderful shows, got to see a lot of wonderful shows that Deirdre was involved with, and then, uh, like Brayden, I get this notification that uh, The Under Presents is, is coming, and it's brought together a bunch of people from the immersive theater community that I, that I really enjoy, and it's happening in VR, which is something that I had been getting into around that same time, and then that was just amazing, and I, I invested a, a huge amount of time into that. And mm. then as that was uh, seemingly starting to, to wind down, though it's gotten a number of extensions over the, over the months due to no, no, a number of features, including the pandemic, um, I decided let's go ahead and let's try to do something in that vein. If, if, if the under isn't going to be around, let's do our own theatrical production. And I guess that was the, the genesis of Para and what has brought us to this point right here. Steve? I'm uh, I'm I'm fairly new to VR actually. My my first experience was uh, I believe it was what a couple of years ago. Deirdre and I bought tickets to an immersive VR event here in California called Chained, which some of our acting friends were were in, and it was pretty amazing. Um, after that, we uh, sometime we we eventually through Deirdre's immersive contacts were given an opportunity to audition, as she read in my biographical information, uh, audition for Tender Claws for the under and Sadly, I couldn't do it, um, but I was around a lot when, uh, as Deirdre has, learned more and performed more in VR. And then uh, here comes along uh, Brian and Braden, and uh, I, I jumped on, and here I am. It's a pretty magical uh platform to be performing in. Let's get into a little bit of the nuts and bolts of things. So uh, is it hard to produce in VR? What are the pros and cons of producing in VR? And I'd kind of like to do this more of as a conversation. So Brian, why don't you start this out and then anybody else wants to jump in as, as more of a conversation uh, and we'll just take this a go. I would say it's generally not very hard. Uh, well, it is and it isn't. Uh, of course, if you have to produce your own props, it can be somewhat overwhelming, but that can be said for any theatrical <laughs> production. You have to make your own props. That, that can take some time. Luckily, there is the Unity Asset Store, especially for the work we do in VR chat. We're able to purchase things for often relatively low amounts of money and make use of the work that other people have done up to this point and just sort of adapt those things to, to our needs. I would say the biggest struggle is that the... Uh, the reality and the physics of the world are not as you would expect them to be. You know, if you, you can turn the collision off on something or don't, or don't remember to put it on and people will start walking through walls, people can fall through areas in the floor that you didn't even know had gaps, uh, certain things involving with your, your scripting that would otherwise, mechanical lights and electronics that would work normally and predictably 
in a traditional theatrical production may not work every day as you expect them to in, in a, a virtual production. As things just have a lot more of an opportunity to, to go wrong. But in terms of, of producing in VR versus producing in real life, I would say producing in VR is much simpler. Uh, also due to the fact that you can store your props very, very simply. I have the show we just did. I didn't have to run out of warehouse to put all of the props from that show. It's just on my hard drive and we can boot it up as, as soon as we want to and get right back into that world. So that's a huge asset versus a theatrical production where you either have to do an entirely thing, new thing every year and purchase new props, or you have to find a way to store it throughout the year until the next uh, opportunity comes around. Yeah. Yeah, I find that, like, one of the big stumbling points has been the fact that while the, the tools have been made available to everyone through different platforms like Rec Room and VR Chat and Alt Space, that um, the things that we're doing and a lot of other things that other people are doing were kind of unanticipated just due to the nature of all the different directions you could possibly go. So at every turn, we're kind of running into different things. We kind of have to figure out, okay, this way, but how can we bend it so that it works way and oh. um, Braden, you're, you're breaking out a little bit. You're breaking. You're breaking in a little bit. So could you just say that last sentence again? Um, we're finding ways to bend it to our will, basically. Um, <laughs> and we've we've been able to, but it, it's it's something that you need to take into account. How about you? How about you, dear? Oh well, I would say yeah. I mean. Ugh. There's, there is a, obviously the, uh, the, the, the different social platforms are there for you to be able to go ahead and produce on and create your projects on instead of having to, you know, as, as they said, you go find a location, rent a theater, uh, find all of your sets, build your set. It's, it's more you switch out your, your, your set designer for somebody who can do Unity or Unreal. You, you switch your costume designer for somebody who can do avatars. And then, you know, you, you, can, you can create. Uh, everything else is almost like creating something in real life. So there's lots of opportunities, I think, for people to get out there, out there and, um, and do it. I mean, there's certainly still some of the same logistics. Like you still want to get, if you're going to do a ticketing platform, you still got to get that set up, you still got to do the same thing with press releases and all of that stuff, depending on how big you want to go. And then you have to get a time commitment from you and your 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 actors or your tech people that they're going to be available. So there's a lot of organization and producing in, in that, but it, it is actually, in my opinion, easier than in uh, in real life. Hmm. It's all. It's also that there's these guys mentioned that there's there's just competing or at least multiple um, uh, mainframes uh, to work within, and uh, it's so new that there's it's it needs some streamlining still. Um, there, it, things can tend to be a bit glitchy as uh, the um, alt space. Um, VR chat uh, platforms like that, they're, they weren't intended to be used the way that we're using them. Um, and so we're pushing the technology to its limits, which is a great thing. And I, I, I feel like the more that creative people and the technical people, the more that we communicate uh, our needs with one another, we'll be able to build some amazing opportunities for all of us to create and produce things in. I would say too, you know, you want to pick a platform that is uh, it, that that is good for your story. So I can Correct. see this platform for being really great for a sitcom or a comedy, you know. And if you're going for obviously VR chat for the monsters because you're doing some sort of scary Halloween yeah. horror thing, you know, it just depends on what it is you're doing. So you want to find the right platform to fit your. Um, right. They all have their benefits right. and so limitations is, based on your project. Leads me uh, to the to the next question, which is uh, many people are understandably excited about what VR can offer to storytellers and performers, but does anything about VR theater performance give you pause or even worry you? Um, there's We're all pausing. A bit of a, a, a lack of immediacy that you have there, or physicality, um, where 
it's, it's as close as you can get outside of being in person, but like say Deirdre is, you know, a foot and a half away from me within the game. Um, it doesn't feel like that. Like for horror, as an example, our past two or current two um, productions are horror. Some of the scaring that you could do, the, the fear for your physical body isn't quite there. Um, and like, there's no collision for technical reasons um, relating to comfort. As an example, I can just put my hand directly into Brian there because if my hand stopped in midair, there would be a disconnect between what my hand is doing in physical space and what my hand is doing in virtual space. And that's kind of something that's been at the forefront of how to get a person into a space in VR since the beginning, but it's also something that um, directly lends itself to um, these sort of productions where we're trying to elicit different feelings from people. But that said, I, we've come up with quite a few different workarounds and there's been quite a few other people that have come up with their own as well and I expect this to change and grow. So that's one reservation, but I don't think it's a hard wall. In, in VR as well, from a, a performing um, aspect, there's a certain amount of um, context that's lost because we don't have the ability to communicate with our, our body language subtly like we would in the physical world. Uh, Braden was talking about the close proximity to Deirdre and we just uh, we just don't have uh, those subtle communication devices that we have with our bodies naturally in life. So uh, we have to find workarounds for those. Pauses become dead space rather than uh, powerful um, moments in a performance. So we've, we've got to find workarounds with movements using our, uh, our, our voices to cover some of that. Um, but uh, the challenges are great to work with. Uh, and I think that uh, we'll be able to uh, find new ways to build our our performances and uh, make them powerful, just as powerful as in as in real life. Hey, uh, excuse me. Uh, I guess if I could if I could get in on that, uh, apologies. I do have some performance issues currently. Uh, uh, I would say not so much preservation as an adaptation, but there is yeah. a certain degree yeah. of unpredictability in the audience. Uh, you cannot suspect that the audience will do the same things that they will do in a physical space. Uh, one thing that particularly sticks out is I'm really used to going through haunted houses and we had a, a haunted house experience, but in haunted houses, people will almost never go back. They will never go back to a previous area that they were in. They understand that there is a linear path through this experience and that they have to go forward. They don't do that necessarily in VR. There is just, for whatever reason, there is just more of this feeling of, I'm just going to go in the other direction if I see something that scares me. And just, yeah, just generally, people will, will do things in a way that you do not suspect that they will in a physical space. So it's not as much of a problem yeah, as it is, excuse the dog, a, a <laughs> reservation. Where's the dog? Uh, he's, he's a vocal one. Uh, yes, but uh, it's 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 an adaptation that's required to uh, to learn how people interact in VR versus in a physical space. Yeah, I would add I would add that that is one of the dangers of working in VR is the outside world coming into the virtual world. So it's one of the things <laughs> that you kind of have to be aware of, like phone calls and you know door knocks and dogs barking. You know, it's certainly something I have to make sure the cats are fed before I go into VR shows and stuff. Um, it's one of those things that you do contend with. Are there some story genres or elements that are that particularly fit in VR well? For example, is VR more appropriate for a, a comedy versus a drama because of its more cartoon-like imagery? What, what are your thoughts? Anyone? Go ahead, Brian. Brian, go ahead. You look like they're ready. To Sorry. Oh, uh, maybe not. Maybe he's let's try Braden. Let's go with Braden. <laughs> Braden he's feeding the dog. Depends on the platform, really. Um, excuse me. Um, 
Sorry, I just wanted you to repeat that question because I couldn't hear Georgia very well. Oh, of course. Yes, yes, of course. And are there more, uh, are there some story genres or elements that particularly fit into VR well? So, for example, is is it, is VR more suited for comedy versus drama because of its cartoon-like imagery? Uh, yeah, so I think that there are certain things that, that do work better. I, anything where you have, where you can leverage that magicalness and that ability to alter the world around you. I think for horror, for fantasy, for anything that has that surreal element, like for instance, we're, we're doing a thing in this, in this current show where you enter in a space and then suddenly another space appears around you that did not exist when you first entered. And then you leave through a space and then you're in a different part area. Anything where you have to leverage that surrealism and, and break those rules, anything that can, can benefit from that, uh, does succeed I, well in, in VR, I think. And then, of course, the, the problem is whenever you have to have that physical connection, as Braden was, was referring to, which is a thing in, in pretty much any form of, of theater or performance. It's a thing in horror because you want to feel like you're physically in that space with that monster that's able to intimidate you. And we, we do struggle to get that same level of physicality in something that's scary in sort of in a, in a drama or a romance or something like that. There's those subtle physical cues that really heighten the, the emotion that we have a, a difficult time tapping into with current VR technology. But yeah, I would say if it, it, just in general, if you're trying to do any sort of fantasy or sci-fi, there's the huge advantage that just comes from what you can do with your sets. I mean, you can't, it costs a lot of money to rent out a warehouse or a massive venue. If you want a massive venue in VR, you just make the world bigger. It's, it's not, a, it's not a, an obstacle at all. So anything that requires that level of scale, I think, is, is really benefited from this, uh, this platform. Nice. Uh, so, I'm I'm wondering, you know, just jumping off of that, is I guess, so do you prefer to work in sort of humanoid uh, avatars, or do you, do you prefer? Is there? How do you feel about working with like a can of tomato soup or a a toaster or what have you as an avatar? Oh, uh, sure. Um, I think it 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 varies. I mean. I'm sure all of you can relate to this. It, it depends on your mood and what you're doing, just like uh, what clothes you're going to wear for the day. The same thing kind of lends itself to VR. Um, sometimes I'll want to be a human. Sometimes I want to be a weird character that's the size of a skyscraper or a little gerbil. And how that translates to theater and VR comes down to, I guess, how far you want to bend things, what space you want your audience to inhabit, and what perspective you want them to have. I mean, there's nothing to stop us from, say, letting one of our audience members be a literal giant for a scene, where within the context of the story, they're a giant, or they're small, or they're a little goblin, or whatever. But, um, yeah, just depends. What kind of opportunities do you see to produce or to act in VR? What kind of opportunities are there? I'm going to throw this one I, to, I, uh, to Brian. Oh, OK. Uh, I would say that it's it, they're fantastic, um, especially because of that ability to inhabit whatever avatar you want to be. And you, you, you don't have it in VR chat. You even have the ability to modulate your voices here. So you can even adjust that element of yourself, whereas typically in, in theater, you kind of have to be who you are. If you physically do not fit the role, then a lot of times you'll lose out on that role even if you could do it because you're just not physically what they need and that's what you can be outside of an a, a elaborate costume. And in terms of uh, the possibilities of interacting with different avatar types, I would actually uh, reference a immersive show, a live immersive show, that I that I did called uh, I want to live in your mouth. I didn't I didn't do it. I, I went to it. Uh, but in that you had puppets and you had puppets that were speaking to you, and that was just a very interesting experience. There in in your life you're so used to dealing even if it's a monster that you're dealing with at a, at a haunt you're so used to dealing with things that are roughly vaguely human sized, and I think it's it's a very surreal and a very exciting experience 
to interact with things that are outside of, of your, your normal experience. So what, what opportunities are there to act and produce in VR? Well, I, I, I think if we're talking about, the, well, the opportunities for actors are essentially endless. It's wh whatever you can do with your voice, you can do. Uh, and even, like I said, even in, in this platform, you can modulate your voice. So even if your voice can't do the, be the character that you're looking to be, you can still be that character. So the options for actors are essentially endless. Um, for producing, again, essentially endless. Uh, you're, there's, not a, there's a very minimal barrier to entry for purchasing props. So if you need space stations, you need scary houses, you need ghosts, you need monsters, those are all available on the asset store for 10, 15, 20 dollars. If you needed to put all that together in a, in a real immersive show, you're looking at hundreds or thousands of dollars. So I think that the really the only, the only limitations are what is allowed on the platform and what you and the limits of your of your creativity. So I think anyone uh, can potentially be a immersive theater producer if they just have a creative idea and they have uh, actors that are willing to work with them, which actors are willing to work right now, if you didn't know. Uh, there's a pandemic happening and uh, a lot of the stuff shut down, so they're more willing to act right now. If you just uh, reach out to them, there's some Facebook groups. So it, it's, it's a very easy uh, industry to get into right now, I'd say. Uh, who would be the audience for, uh, for VR, VR performances? Who is the audience? Potentially Ready? anyone, uh -oh. so long as uh, someone has access to a headset, which we have a minimal level of control there. However, I think that will take care of itself in time, especially with things like the Quest 2 and its lower price. But anyone, anywhere, and that's one of the great advantages, is there's no physical boundaries for uh, production, where previously um, what we're putting together would be kind of exclusively centered in some of the bigger metropolitan areas, whether it's East Coast, West Coast, Chicago, London, etc. Now anyone can join in. Um, it's just a matter of time before having a headset becomes as ubiquitous as having, you know, a computer at your house or a, a smartphone. Um, but potentially anyone, the, the big hurdle is to communicate to everyone that this is a possibility, this is something that exists, and kind of getting them in that mindset. But it could be anyone, anyone. I want to throw this exciting. next question to Steve uh, regarding uh, what's it like to uh, act in VR and how does it differ from acting in real life? Uh, well, the uh, uh, like Brian was saying, the, the use of one's voice and modulating that is is one of the primary tools that we have as actors, so uh, um, we get to step into more of our uh, voice actor roles as well. Um, the it, it was amazing for me that when I started uh, producing and and performing with all of you guys in in virtual reality, um, it, it was the the learning curve for me uh, had been has been very steep. Uh, very early on, I found that physically what what I'm doing is I have a headset on with an earpiece in one ear. We are on a disc. We are on the Discord on our phones with a wireless uh, earpiece in the other ear, so that we can talk to each other outside of the world, and uh, so we're not distracting the audience, or we need to pass. Uh, information along to uh, one another outside of the show and learn a script, learn the blocking like we would in real life, and then also de deal with the uh, technical issues of being in VR. It's been tremendous. It's like having a lot of balls in the air um, <laughs> to to juggle, learn how to juggle at one time. And I've also found that our, um, the, um, uh, uh, Focusing on a performance completely, a hundred percent of the time, is really not possible because we've got we've got to communicate with other people in the in the production. Sometimes uh, things freeze up, sometimes they go down, sometimes we have to make adjustments technically. Um, but it's really been quite an amazing um, uh, experience thus far. Um, 
uh, I've, I've also learned that because of, as I mentioned earlier, that there is a, a loss of the ability to communicate non-verbally as effectively as in the physical world, that going back and, and looking at old classic plays uh, like Greek plays where they used uh, masks and kabuki theater, as well as studying puppeteers, specifically marionetting, is very helpful in watching how those performers use their tools, be it their own bodies or the marionettes, to evoke uh, really quite compelling performances can also be helpful. Um, when, I, when I rehearse, I try to find worlds where there are mirrors, where I can work with the avatar as I'm learning the script and find out what works the best as far as communicating what the character's needs are. How about you? Uh, I actually wanted to move on to the future of VR. If we're going to look down like maybe three to five years, Brian, what do you see in the future of VR as a performance? I'm really excited about producing on a lot of different levels. I think that's something I really want to look uh, for in, in the, the future. I mean, technolo technologically, of course, there's going to be massive improvements on that end. We don't really have much to say about that. Uh, you know, haptics would be wonderful. Uh, facial tracking, easier access to, to full body tracking would, of course, allow us to have a greater degree of expressiveness. But I also think we need to look at, especially because the audience isn't quite what it would be in, in real life at the moment, though it potentially has the, has the opportunity to be much larger. Uh, we need to look at multiple different avenues of performance because you can have these these large sweeping performances and maybe your audience will come out once or twice to see them, but you only have an audience that's so big because you're this niche within this niche, your performance within VR and you know not everyone's into live theatrical performance, not everyone has a VR headset, so you have to make the most of the audience that you have. And I think the way you do that is by having performances on all of these different platforms and having uh, solo actor performances that might be 10, 15 minutes long that people will want to go to multiple times per week potentially and just make that part of their lifestyle. And then you can have these larger performances that are these things that people might go to once a month, once every couple of months. But I think that that's something that I'm, I'm very excited about is, is a, an ecosystem of immersive performance that caters to all sorts of different audiences and all different levels. Lovely. I think what I'd like to do now is take some questions from the audience. Well, let me come on down there. We brandish your lightsaber. And, uh, and talk to you all about uh, what it is that you want to know about this. I'm going to jump on over to this side, and I'm going to speak this, and I'm going to if this works, hi, go ahead and talk and ask a question there. Firebird27. Yeah, I think so. I, this is not a microphone. It's supposed to allow you to talk, so please just, I think uh, I can okay. hear you, so go ahead so, and ask your question. So, um, about your game, Krampus, um, well, how long do you think it, it'll take to make, like, the whole game? Uh, we uh, are looking to, to have... Yeah. Uh, Krampus Knocked, our new show, will be uh, in December, should be. Uh, actually, I think we've already published. We got, the tickets are out. So, yeah, actually, I think we can announce that uh, December 19th, I want to say, is when you'll mm -hmm. be able to attend our show. So, uh, wow. yeah, and that'll yeah. be going out throughout Christmas. And, yeah. yeah, it's a or preview show on the 18th, and then the 19th a and 18th, 20th, yeah. and then the next. Yeah, the following weekend. No, it's, it's not really a game. It's more of a theatrical production, though. Like a show, right? Yeah, it, like right. a show. But you you get to be a part of it. Um, did you mean more um how how long it took us to create it? Yes. Um, I think we started pre-production uh, about a month ago, give or take. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, roughly, roughly Something like that. Ago, yeah. the there was there was murmuring and chattering uh, during during Para, which happened throughout uh, Halloween. So we were already discussing things and getting in the pre-production phase around that time. But major production started around the beginning of November, and you know we're looking. We're, we're still we're still in the middle of it, but we're uh, we're getting getting through yeah, that, and we will be ready to go probably by the middle of, of December. Yeah, we. We were we were up against the gun with these two uh, projects because they are holiday specific, and that's when we started all of this. So, um, 
presumably after Krampus knocked uh, future productions, we will be able to develop over a longer period of time and uh, expand them, make them a little bigger and better, and then hopefully come back to the previous ones and fix them up and make them bigger and better. Hello, I'm going to uh, go ahead and go to uh, run, run here, Ru Ruin, Ruin Thunder Cover. Go ahead and uh, ask your question. Let's see if that unmutes you. Okay, can you hear no? me? Oh, yes, I can. Go ahead, ask. Okay. Do you guys wish to inspire people to do the same thing that y'all are doing to expand what y'all are doing as a whole thing so that way it actually is a professional business? Um, I think that that's kind of the kind of the plan is it but we're we're going one step at a time to see where we can take it um the big thing is we need to um raise awareness that this is a thing that exists so that we can build our audience because without the audience we you know are just screaming into the void um <laughs> but ideally um once we have more awareness and people know okay this is an immersive thing where I'm, as an audience member, not just setting out in a crowd, but I'm transported into the story where I'm actually a part of the story with live actors and getting getting that information across to people and getting them into experiences where they can really wrap their mind around what that is, is the first big step. But going forward from there, I will have to take it by year, but hopefully, hopefully it will continue to expand. Yeah, one of the big things right. that we're currently looking at is is the logistic challenge of of finding that sweet spot in terms of your actors. Because the more actors you have, the more staff you have, that's the pie is being split up 10, 15, 20 different ways, and it's much harder to make that financially viable. So we are looking at different levels of of, of experience that we can provide and different uh, and, and how we can get the most experience out of having a limited cast and thus allowing everyone on that cast to be fairly compensated. Mm -hmm. uh, Vapor Deck, I saw you. Go ahead and ask your question. ShopDenino69.com Yes, we can hear you, Vapor Deck. Okay. Go ahead. Um, I, 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 can't, I can't hear. Okay. I, I think you're... Uh, hello? I can hear okay, you. you. I can, can hear. I can hear. Oh, okay, good. Hang on, good let me check ahead. my mic. I, 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 no, I can hear you now. Hear you now. Okay, awesome. So, how do you plan to handle people such as trollers and just people who want to take the experience <laughs> off the rails to the extent that's like to the point where you can't have that? Um, being that it's like a paid show, um, like how would you do that? We just bounce the media and never on. back. Yeah, we're currently working on being able to waterboard them in a small <laughs> third world country. No, 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 no. No, what? it's completely serious. That's a joke. Um, it <laughs> it joke. depends. It depends on the platform and what tools are at your disposal. Ideally, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Um, I think a big thing that we'll run into is people being new to these sort of experiences and not really knowing what is expected from them in terms of their role. So. Um, as cast and crew, it's kind of our duty to make sure that we first off build it in a way where we're organically communicating that to the audience, what this is, what their role is, and then if someone steps out of line and goes somewhere they're not supposed to, we're able to kind of wrangle them in and push them back to where they're what they're supposed to be doing. Now, granted, there's always going to be the risk that someone's going to, you know, willingly pay money for a ticket with the sole intention of getting in there and causing trouble. And depending on the platform, there's different tools. Usually there's the option to warn a player or to kick a player, um, in which case, depending on what happened, they may get a refund, they may get a second shot, or maybe that's just the end of it because they had caused too much issue. It's it's really a, a case by case sort of thing because human behavior is an entire spectrum of different things. So it's really case by case. Awesome. Yeah, if Thank anyone's you. looking to actually but, produce a show, I would recommend. Uh, probably uh, in most cases, you will want to refund people. It just it, even if someone is causing 
causing havoc and did justifiably get kicked, uh, you generally want to maintain a good rapport with people and a good uh, positive reception. So I would recommend whenever possible to just, if, if someone has to get kicked out for whatever reason, refund them their money and, you know, maintain a cordial relationship. Awesome. Mm. Uh, I do have another question. Boy? We do have enough time. Oh, no, we do. I got to move on to a couple other people, but uh, if I can okay, get no Banana Boy, um, I saw you. Uh, with your hand up, because I've got a lot. I've got a lot of hands up. I'm going to do three more questions, and then we'll we'll wrap this up because it is only supposed to be an hour. Okay. So, uh, Banana Boy, if you can go ahead and ask a question. Uh, I need to do this. Oh, I guess I don't. Is it working? Um, I I I can't hear. Okay. Try it again. Hear me. I think I can hear you now. now. Okay. Okay. So, how long did it take you for like all of you to meet and do this live show? Um, I mean, we, we kind of talked about that a little bit. Um, in terms of meeting, I mean, Brian met these guys a while ago, and and I met Deirdre through the under sort of <laughs> over the course of a year. But in terms of production. I mean, it's it's all come together pretty quick. Uh, when did we start Para exactly? This was uh, right started, before yeah, Halloween. Early mid September. Yeah, That's when we started yeah. talking about it in early September. But yeah, around mid September was probably where it really got into full gear. Yeah. So yeah, it hasn't been very long. Yeah, yeah we pretty, pretty much that all properly met in the under. Yeah. <laughs> Does that answer your question? Yeah. Good. Good. Um. All right. Go ahead. T Magic. Oh, well, welcome. So, sorry, that was, uh, uh, that was quiet. Right again. What is the show going to be about? It's about Krampus. It's about the origin of Krampus, and you get to uh, experience being, being a naughty child and be having Krampus <laughs> on, your, on your heels looking to put you in his sack, and you get to hear about how he <laughs> came about and, and the, the lore, and you get to enjoy the wonderful the, snowy Alps of Austria. The relationship you, you know between Krampus him is? and him. I think you I know, know who, who that is. is. It's sort of the opposite Krampus of Santa Claus. Is sort of, Yes, he's the Christmas devil. He naughty children gets put get put in his sack or imprisoned or whatever the the local uh, village likes to do to scare their children. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, um, and then uh, a jolly shadow. You've been waiting a while. What are some of like the major roadblocks and some of the major problems you have experienced with trying to create live shows on VR? That's a great question. Um, well, I, I I would think my my uh, major issue is that I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, so <laughs> that, That's not true. Creating a show, and I'm like, yeah, you know, we'll figure it out. Uh, but you know, I've learned by doing, and um, it's this next show is feeling a lot smoother and a lot. It's coming along a lot better than than the previous show. Uh, yeah, you just have to learn about those the idiosyncrasies and the strangeness of, of VR and the problems you're likely to have and how to best overcome those hurdles and how to, you know, you're, you're not going to completely pave over everything and completely smooth out the experience, but how best when you do run into problems to address those things. And I think that just comes from experience. Yeah, yeah, ab absolutely. Yeah, in a lot of other different fields, there's going to be people that came before you that kind of laid out the roadmap, and to a certain extent there has been here, but in a lot of different ways we kind of have to pave our own path forward, which is a bit more difficult, but it's also pretty cool that we have the privilege of setting that precedence. So hopefully uh, future people who are creating things will be able to look to us and others like us and kind of have yeah, a path Help to each follow. other out. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And we that it's three it's just about 10 minutes to four so um we're going to wrap up the panel here uh formally but we will hang out for another 10 minutes afterwards and and informally answer some more questions if you like i just wanted to thank you all for being here for coming in and having an interest in this very exciting new platform uh yes krampus Knox will be uh opening for uh for previews on the 18th and we'll have a 19th and 20th law shows the following weekend we'll have
instructions, and there is a code there, rec room, all lowercase, all one word, that'll give you 25% off a show. Um, there are uh, several live actors in the show, so it is more of an experience than a game. It's a live theatrical production, um, and each with this, and a fairly intimate audience, not too many, about six audience members, so it should be a, a lot of fun, and we hope to see all of you there. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Absolutely. Really appreciate it. Thank you all so much for coming up. Hope to see you at the show or the next yes. one. And as right. promised, yeah. uh, I'm going to so come down to here and uh, see if we can uh, answer some more of your questions, you guys, if you have more questions. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know oh, if I need a little cinema okay. pop, though. Yeah. Um, yeah. Get it. Just it was awesome, man. Yeah. Thanks need, for being part of it. I don't know if we need it or not, but I'll grab it. Do we have hands, unfortunately? I'm on the